Today we'll be taking a look at the Ludlam 14C Geiger counter, Ludlam Measurements Incorporation, Seat Water, Texas. Taking a look at it, we see that it's like all the rest and is in a ruggedized, nice container that is also waterproof. It is around 1.3 kilograms and 1.6 with the batteries installed. For the Freedom Units lovers out there, that calculates to 3.5 pounds with the batteries and without 2.6 pounds. Unlike the rest, this one comes with a cesium-137 source on the side, which outputs beta and gamma. Closing that back up, let's look at the face. We see the handle with the detector holder. We see the dial, which can read 1000, 100, 10, 1, and 0. We see the Type-C connector, the on-off switch for the audio, and the speaker on the side rated at 60 decibels, the fast and slow switch, the reset button, which moves the dial all the way back, and the battery test button, which moves the dial to the spot where it's testing to show that the batteries are good. Turning it on to 1000 and pressing it, we see that the battery is okay. Now what's interesting about the Ludlum 14C is that it can have an external scintillator probe or gamma radiation probe and a GM detector, but it also has an internal Geiger Muller tube, which you can hear it clicking. When it's set to 1000, that reads internal and is the first line down here. It, this reads in millirotogens, and then for the type C connector, which connects to the external detector, it can read in count per minutes and microrotogens per hour. It's important that the batteries are in the proper way, having positive up and negative up on the side. If they're put in backwards, then when pressing battery test, it'll move down instead of to the battery OK. Now let's look, hook up one of the detectors. This is the 443, which is a gamma scintillator. Turning it on to 0 0.01. We see that it maxes out already. So let's move it up one. A scintillator probe is very sensitive, where it has a medium crystal, which is sensitive to the radiation. And when it hits, it causes that material to glow. And then inside the scintillator, there's a photomultiplier tube, which that takes each of those flashes of light and sends it the meter. You see it clips on at the top and it is held there. Pressing the reset button we see that it moves all the way back down and will steadily regrow to where it was. Let's move all the radioactive materials away and get a basic reading of the surrounding areas. Now that all the materials have been moved and there's nothing nearby the probe that's radioactive and it's just natural background, we see that the average around here is around 600-ish counts per minute and steadily bouncing between 600 and 700 counts per minute. Now that we have our baseline, let's bring some radioactive material in and test it. First in the chopping block, we have the original Petromax thorated lantern mantles. Maxed out, so let's move up to times 10. And we see that it's slowly falling. 
until it'll settle out. And it's settled out around 13,000 counts per minute. Now it's on the times 10 setting, so we're going to take the reading that is shown on there and times it by 10. And vice versa for either on 0 0.1, one time scale, it's direct reading what it's on said, times 10, you times it by 10, and times 100, times by 100, and times 1,000, moves to this bottom one, and it's just internal GM. You can hear as I move it closer, the clicks get louder and louder and more rapid, and I move it away, the clicks get less. Now let's take this away and get some radium in here. Now let's get a radium clock over here. And you see here, as soon as I bring it over, it starts detecting the gamma output of the clock with the radium paint on it. Bring it close to it and run the times 100 setting. Let's flip it to fast mode. And it moves up. And it's bouncing around 20,000 to 3,000 counts, 30,000 counts per minute. Taking it away drops down, and then bringing it back. Scintillators are very sensitive, so you can measure the radiation even if it has very low moderations from a good distance away. You're here again, as I'm sweeping the past it, you can hear the clicks pick up and the clicks go back down. Now let's bring an americium 241 pallet from a smoke detector in. That's on fast mode, going near the west clock, radium painted clock. Looking at the slow mode, hitting reset. This is slow mode. So by slipping it to the fast or slow mode, fast is 4 seconds or slow mode is 22 seconds from 10% to 90% of the final reading. Still on times 100 settings, let's bring the probe close to it. And we see that it flattens out at about 120,000 counts per minute. And you can hear it singing beautifully. If you don't want any clicks to happen, you can just turn off the audio. And it gets much quieter. Now let's bring in a piece of octonite, some uranium ore. Flipping it back down to times one scale and hitting the reset button to zero it out, we can measure the octanine. But let's first turn the audio back on.
you see that it maxes out rapidly. Let's turn it back to the times 10. Maxes out again. Let's turn it to times 100. And we're sitting around 20,000 counts per minute. very sensitive even bringing it next to the side it starts to whine even though it's not in front of the detector part the gamma radiation penetrates through the sides of the detector let's put this back and get another sample here we have a vial of thorium dioxide made in a previous video Barely moves on times 100, so let's move it down to times 10. And we're sitting around 8 to 9,000 counts per minute. And for last, let's check the beta gamma at cesium-137 on the side. Reading a little bit less than 30,000 counts per minute. Now let's turn it off and check out the insides and compare it to the CDV700. First big difference is, is the color scheme where this one is a tannish and this one's a bright yellow, painted for use in civil defense. The next big difference is the handles where this one is the actual Geiger Muller tube and this one has a regular handle. The Geiger Muller tube on this one cannot be detached, but this one can use scintillators and Geiger Muller tubes. This one also does not come with an audible speaker, and you have to attach headphones. But they do both come with operational check sources. They both read in counts per minute and have a times 100, times 10, and times 1, but this does not have a times 0.1 or a times 1000, or it does not have an internal probe. It also doesn't measure rotogens per hour, or millirotogens per hour, or microrotogens per hour. It doesn't have a battery test feature either. It's a more bare bones compared to the more modern Ludlum. Let's take a look, and look at each side, inside of each one. They're both open with clips. First, this one is a lot simpler compared to the more modern Ludlum. The Ludlum only runs off of two D cell batteries, while the 1960s CDV700 runs off four. This one has the calibration inside, and this one has an external calibration where you remove these panels and you can calibrate the high voltage. And here is the internal GM tube, where it, when it's set at times 1,000, it can measure the radiation. And this one does not have anything of that kind, and has very basic components. Considering this is more modern production, 
and is still being produced today, and this was made back in the 60s. Both detectors are nice and ruggedized and will last many years to come. Let's set it to the times a thousand and turn the audio on and move the clock towards the back. The meter doesn't really move that much, but you can hear the audible chirping. The times a thousand is only in situations where you'll be exposed to high amounts of radiation and need to measure it. Thanks for watching and see you next time. If you get bored while waiting for the next video to come out, check out some of my other ones. And if you want to have input on upcoming videos and projects and talk about general science-y stuff, check out the link in the description which has my Discord server.